Hi everyone, I'm Claire Liu and I'm the CEO of New Your Company and today I've got a very special guest. I have with me Michael Locke, who might be better known to some of you on the internet as Rams and he is the VP of Engineering at Slack and is someone who, I mean we met at what, a conference I think we've both spoken at maybe a few years ago and um, yeah, love what you. Yeah, I know it's been a while. Uh, love what you had to say, and um, you know, Michael Hall has done some just incredible writing. I mean, written a book on on managing people. I believe it's called Managing Humans. Um, in addition to uh, just being, you know, a, a real advocate about thinking really thoughtfully for how to manage teams, um, especially you know, engineering teams. And so, a real pleasure to have you today, Michael. And I'm excited to ask you this one question about leadership. Absolutely. Um, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a lovely Friday and it's looking forward to talking leadership. <laughs> cool. So the one question I have for you, Michael, is what's one thing you wish you would have learned earlier as a leader? Uh, it's a really easy question. I thought you were going to throw me a hard, a hard ball oh, here, good. but it's a really easy one. Good. <laughs> um, the, uh, the thing that I uh, look for the thing I wish I'd learn, and it's something that I look for in all sort of emerging leaders, is it sounds really simple, but it's a very, very complex sort of action act, um, is delegation. The, the act of delegation for a, a, a manager or a senior manager or an experienced manager is just this real solid power move because it's about giving up something, doing something that you might love to do, and we are trained as individuals to like, this is my thing, and I got to deliver on it, and I got to know about it, and this sort of thing. And you become a manager, and suddenly your job is to give away your Legos and give away your your toys, and that's just hard. It's just hard because you know you could do great on it if you were hands on, and you just see a lot of really strange really backwards leadership behaviors of people like who half delegate or try to micromanagement is the act of not delegating and there's all of these things that go on um, when someone's kind of not really delegating well that, that I've just been screwing up for like decades by the way um, <laughs> that it's really interesting to see that moment when I watch a manager or or someone just like say hey I know I can get it and I'm just doing it myself yeah I'm going to give it to the team, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a B, but that's okay because I'm now responsible for getting it back to an A because they've never done it before or, you know, whatever the reasons are. Yes. Oh, they have so much domain. Maybe they get an A. Who knows? But watching them do that, it's just such a fundamental move of selflessness, and it's a fundamental move of trusting the team, and they know. They know that you're giving them the thing. Like, whoa, I'm not really yeah. trying to do this. Like, that's cool. Right. That's awesome. That's like yeah. my job is to help you kind of conquer the uncon to to do that sort of incredible work. So that delegation thing um, is one of the first things I look for in managers, and I and I say this this answer many times mm -hmm. because I'm just like this is this is how we'll know that you are you understand the job of, of management and leadership. Absolutely. I mean, you said that it's something that you know sort of <laughs> took you maybe decades to to learn. I mean, how, did you like? Was there a moment that caused you or something that happened where you went wow like i i am yeah. i am messing up my role as a manager because <laughs> i'm not willing to delegate and what do you think is the thing that holds people back from from giving that you know passing something yeah. on to the team yeah the first question is when do i know yeah. um i have this thing that is Really, like in only in the last couple of years, I realized, and it's sort of a being a, a leading indicator that I'm not delegating enough, mm -hmm. and it's when I'm busy. Like when someone says, "Oh, like they sent me a mail," and I'm like, "Oh, I know you're super busy," I go, N "No, I'm, I'm not." And like, and if I ever am busy, yep. my that I'm failing as a leader because I'm not. not busy. I mean, like my job is to run the team well, and like me being busy is a fundamentally inefficient state. Hmm. And when I feel busy, it means, oh, I've got too much on my plate. There's something upstream from what I've signed up to do or something where I'm like, I am doing too much. Yes. And it's not that I don't like being busy and getting things done. It's that sure. if I'm sending a signal that I don't have time for my team or I don't have stuff to do, that's like, that's bad. And right. they start to think that that's the way you're supposed to work. And that's not a good way of working. Right. So that's how I know is when I'm like, I'm like, 
oh, I've, I've got too many things. But the thing, what it comes, even with this experience, it comes and bites me, is there's just certain projects I love to do. Like, they're just like, yeah. it's just like, it's like engineers struggle sometimes with managers and say, this is not coding because it's such a satisfying act of building. So the thing that I've messed up is like, oh, God, this is such a lop shape task. And yeah. like, it's perfect. And I will have great joy doing this for the next three weeks. And it's like, it's selfish, you know, because someone else should learn how to do that thing and learn that joy that I got when I did it. So, yeah. um, but that's why I continue to screw it up is almost always when I'm like, oh, I'll just do this one thing. And it's like, oh, no, you, you, should, you should give that to Julia. You should give that to, to Ross and let them run with it. So. Absolutely. I mean, I think what you're describing, this sort of uh, awareness that keeping something for yourself is inherently a selfish act. I mean, I think that's a hard realization for a lot of leaders because like you said, um, I mean, it's fun. I, I can definitely know, I reflect on things that I, you know, that I do know your company where, you know, we've hired other folks on and I've been like, do I, do, do I, do I want to give that to that person? Because I actually kind of mm-hmm. like it, right? I kind of like, or, or I think something you alluded to earlier is this fear about quality, right? And yeah. when do you know that something is going to be, be good enough? But I think something that you also touched on is this, that it's the role of the leader to make sure and say, okay, let's get this from a B to an A. Or even yep. to be pleasantly surprised, right, that it is going to, you know, maybe turn out to be an A. So as a leader, like, what are things that we should be thinking about and doing to, to when we do delegate, to put that person in a good position, right, to put that person in a position to, of success, right? I, I mean, yeah. I, I'm going to safely assume that you're not just saying, like, okay, just assign out tasks, right, and then just, like, leave, leave, leave people to the wolves, right? There's, there's some coaching involved and, in, um, you know, course, some context that you give. So, so t- yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Um, it's another sort of early leadership move we got to go, which is read the room, um, understand the people that you have, the team that you have, and the individuals that you have, because there's, I have a, I have a, a profile for every one of my direct reports mm-hmm. and it's something we've talked about. I'm like, I think we're, I have a leadership rubric and these are the things I'm looking for out of my leaders and these are the clauses and we have an understanding. We talk about, Hey, these are the things you're amazing at. These are the things we're working on. So that's the number one is know the people and the teams that you have. And number two is, as this work just kind of flows across your desk, it's like, okay, is this a Ross thing? Is this a Julia thing? Is this a Frank thing? Whatever. And going, okay, what is the, who should it go to? Who's going to get the most um, learning out of this? And then, based on what I know about the person or the team, it's like, okay, what do I need to do in terms of framing, in terms of coaching, in terms of, like, setting expectations? And obviously that varies from, like, just throw over the fence because Julia just she's got it. I just yeah. trust her to do those things or right. give it to Frank. And like okay, this is going to be I'm going to weekly touch-ins or like I'm going to write a spec right out of the gate and kind of be a little bit more uh, directive. So mm-hmm. it just depends on what the person needs and how they need to grow and you know where you're at with them in terms of, in terms of their professional growth. Absolutely. I think sometimes something that I know a lot of CEOs and founders that we work with and that I speak to sometimes find difficulty in that line between delegating effectively and providing context so that person doesn't, you know, sink and drown versus Mm -hmm. micromanaging and maybe checking in too much or telling the person how to do it or, uh, you know, sort of imposing their own processes or tastes on how this person is going to do something. I mean, how is yeah, yeah. how's a leader, especially when maybe you coach other managers, do you try to let people know, here's when you give people enough information, here's when you need to back off and give people that space to, to at least do the job. Yeah. Let's just, uh, let's, let's, let's first concede that micromanagement as a, a leadership skill is super bad. Yeah. And, and let's, regardless of how things were set up or, or how things were um, staged or what the relationship is, just like if you're on the receiving end of micromanagement, you're just like, oh, I failed. Like it doesn't matter. It's like yeah. I failed. Like, you know that. I'm, the boss is showing up all the time. Da, da, da. So let's just put that like over there. Micromanagement is bad. Highly directive, constructive feedback. <laughs> um, Intense involvement. Um, I, I realize it sounds like I'm saying exactly the same thing as micromanagement. It's not because it's around the intent. Mm. Micromanagement is like, oh, I know you failed, and now I hear I come to save you. Uh, what I'm talking about these other words is, hey, okay, I'm dialing it up because I sense a directionally <laughs> we're headed in the wrong direction right. here, or 
it's a it's a subjective thing. It involves like taste, like you say. Right. And I, I feel like we're kind of headed in this other direction, and I want to weigh in on this sort of thing. It's, it's there's this nuance of intent between the different kind kinds of uh, direction you're going to go to. Like if, if you're in a really good state with a team and you have high trust, when you come in there and act like a micromanager or something like that, they're not they're not seeing this is failure and Lop is mad or blah blah blah. They're saying like they're saying like, oh, he's here to help, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come and be, I'm going to come and coach this piece. I'm going to come and like be there. And it's just, it's how you're presenting that sort of highly directed leadership that I think is the big difference between it being this demoralizing situation or this coaching situation. It's totally different. And it's Absolutely. like, you know, when you're giving feedback, this is a hard feedback to someone, you know, this is a moment that you're either you're going to demoralize or you're going to build trust. Right. It's super hard. It's like one of the hard feedback is one of the hard thing to manage. And it's, yes. and it's how you're delivering it. Everything you said before that, you know, all the things that you're saying there are sort of the difference between, between, uh, you know, making it a positive versus a negative sort of interaction. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, it's such a hard, hard balance to find, and I think you, you know, your your um, description of thinking about uh, how, you know, how you build trust versus how you make, you know, avoid avoid it being a demoralizing situation. Uh, I mean, it all I think comes down to, yeah, definitely intent is a huge part of it. I also think, in, and you know, this is I think implied in, in what you responded, the the way that you 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 provide that feedback. Right. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, just telling that person this sucks. Here's why. Like you should have done it this way. Right. right. But, um, you know, right. asking asking questions. Right. That say, well, can you tell me a little bit about why? Right. OK. Do you mind if I share, you know, why I think yeah. it could have been like this? Right. And so it's yeah. just different ways to, to build the person up versus, you know, tearing them down. Right. So I think that's um, yeah. that's really, really helpful. So uh, I guess my last thought here, or the thing that I'm curious to know is, uh, for for managers who are first time managers, right, and they're uh -huh. they're flexing this new muscle of delegating. Uh, I mean, what advice do you have for them to get more comfortable with this? Because, I mean, personally, it's a very uncomfortable thing as someone who you know you right. spend the majority of your career sort of being the individual contributor, building pride in your craft, and now it's you're saying, okay, stop doing those things and actually give it up, right? What, what right, advice right. do you have for folks who are who are just getting into that to become more comfortable with this skill? I don't. You know, it's a really good question. I have this talk I do called the New Manager Death Spiral, <laughs> and what I do is, is I just make I took every bad decision that I made and I stitched it together into like this this awful horrible story of like and it's not about delegation but it's really kind of about trust and respect. And I just walk it down as a new manager to like the worst <laughs> place you can be. Um, and I, I wrote that talk just because I've, I've seen I've seen all of these new managers struggle with parts of that. Not the, they would never do it in this cascading you know series of awful steps. Sure. But, but the reason I do it is just to describe I, and, I, and I exaggerate a bit to describe sort of like the consequences of not doing it well, and to also put the and I, I talk a lot about how the team is seeing you during this death spiral to kind of both remind them of what they were like when they were an individual, but also how they see managers and some of the trials and tribulations and assumptions there, just to kind of like give them that other perspective. Because I think what new managers, and myself included, right, did this long ago, is they assume like there's this power that you're granted like, like when you become a manager. And there's some things there, like, you know, comp or performance reviews or whatever, but it's, nothing is granted. It's all earned. Yes. It's all responsibility to be earned. And you earn them by them trusting you. So yes. delegation and some other things as well are just these things that are these trust building maneuvers. Right. And, and when you understand that that's the, the currency that, that you're building yes. with these folks, um, and like there's and it's not a it's not a switch that says, you know, I'm a manager, I get this hat that says right. manager on it. It's just it's a stick that you build over time that it makes it a little more approachable and a little less scary. Um, yeah. So it's, that's one way to do it. Absolutely. No, I think, uh, I love that. I think focusing on trust and thinking of it as this currency to be able to delegate well, and that's really the means of which of how well that situation is actually going to go. How well are you building yeah. trust? How well are you building that rapport? Uh, I mean, that makes that makes total yep. sense. So. Well, Michael, thank yeah. you so much for, for your time. This is incredible. I, I've learned a lot. And yeah, like I said, really respect your work. And so thanks so much for, yeah, for <laughs> participating. Absolutely. Thank you very much.